All right, this is going to be part two of uh, my vertical bandsaw conversion. Um, I'm going to answer a few questions that I've had from the first video. Uh, but first, I want to talk a little bit about converting uh, equipment over from uh, single phase motors to three phase variable speed, that kind of thing. Now, I don't claim to be an expert in this. I've done it a few times. It's not that hard. A lot of people think that, you know, variable speed is uh, just out of their skill set. It's, it's not that much to it, really. These, especially these little tools like uh, they have these Chinese motors on them. They don't last very long. They're not very good motors. And they also don't tell you a lot of information there. You know, it'll tell you the, what they, what they consider the horsepower, which one horsepower, I don't think so. But um, what you need to know on a lot of these is the, or at least what I think is the NEMA code for the motor. On your, you know, American made, more reputable motors, it's gonna have a, a code on there that really narrows down what this motor is. See right here where it says frame 56? It may say 56C, and uh, the difference is there's charts and stuff you can find online, but if you if you know you've got a NEMA 56 motor, even if it's single phase, if you buy a NEMA 56 three phase, it's gonna be, more than likely, it's gonna be a bolt-in replacement. Three phase motors are more efficient. They have less maintenance. They don't have the capacitor. They don't have the, um, the centrifugal switch to go bad. I mean, they just work. I mean, you look out there in the industry, they don't use single phase motors for much. They're just not reliable enough. The other part of the conversion, if you want to go variable speed, is a um, variable speed drive or vari variable frequency drive. And they're not mysterious. There's, they're actually fairly simple. And again, I'm not going to say I'm an expert, but the way these things work, they'll take single phase power in and um, internally there's a bridge in there, it converts it into a DC voltage, kind of a bus voltage. So it doesn't care whether it's three phase input or single phase input, it's, well, no, either one, it's converting it to DC. And then there's uh, some switching transistors in there that chop that DC voltage back up into variable frequency and um, so you, you can drive a three phase motor just fine with a single phase VFD. They're on eBay, they're in surplus places, you can find them. They're really simple. Single phase input, three phase output. The programming on most of them is not even you know hard to figure out. So if you're going to convert a tool, you know, find a, a replacement motor that's the same frame size, same shaft, that kind of thing. Find a single phase input drive and you can convert any of these tools, bandsaws, mills, um, drill presses, all these smaller shop tools, you can convert them all to variable speed. So anyway, on with the uh, update part of this video. I had a few questions about uh, my first video. In this part two, I was gonna maybe expand a little on something I had tried to explain not so well. This is the centrifugal switch that had caused me the motor problems in the first video. You can see this piece inside how it moves. Contacts, and I think I mentioned it reminded me of the points on a on an old car. The uh, this is the centrifugal part. The plastic rides on that on this ring. And it, it keeps pressure on the on that contact, keeps it closed. And as this comes up to speed, the, the uh, plastic piece pulls back and in turn releases that capacitor out of that star winding. When you turn it off and the speed slows, this starts to expand and pushes back on that contact so it's ready to start the next time. I don't know if that helps any, but what had, what had happened was the uh, those surfaces there, which I don't know if it's focusing, but they had got a little, I guess, arcing or corrosion or something, and they had just they were just stuck. They were stuck like that all the time. And when I took it apart, I popped them open and I took a little piece of real fine sandpaper and 
clean both sides and from that point on it seemed to work fine got a little bit of a dilemma here my first video you remember i uh, cleaned this gearbox out and i put some uh, gear oil on it which the gear oil i found was just something i had in my cabinet i don't even remember what i'd used it on but it's gl5 and uh, a few people have told me that gl5 is uh, bad for brass or bronze gears that it degrades them or destroys them and uh, so I thought, well, I may change the oil while I've got this thing taken apart, but you get to looking on the back of this bottle, though, and it says right there that suitable for use were GL2, GL3, GL4, and GL5. See right there where my thumb's at? So, uh... I don't know. I'm kind of curious. Do you really think it's, uh, you really think this is hard on uh, brass or bronze gears? I also have some of this in my cabinet. I've got a, uh, I put a five speed uh, overdrive tranny in an old work truck I've got, and um, it's a later model transmission and it required, you know, I can't remember what it called for, but, uh, this uh, Royal Purple is supposed to be uh, compatible with it. So, but the same thing when I read the back of it, it makes me seem to make me think it says it's good for GL4 or 5. Got a focus, see right there? Meets both the GL4 and GL5 performance. So, I don't know, guys, what's the difference? I, I'm not, I, I don't see it. Another thing I didn't really cover in the first video, which some of you may have been curious about, I took the uh, original start switch off of the uh, chassis of the saw, and I just mounted it right on this motor connection box. I just drilled a hole and put it on there and moved, you know, to shorten my cords, moved all my connections up to there. Then I just had the one power cord coming out the bottom. and. Uh, it worked, you just reach over and flip it on and off, it worked really good. And here's the reason for part two of this little project. Uh, after I fixed this centrifugal switch, the uh, motor seemed fine, and uh, you know I cut a lot of stuff with it. And one day I uh, had something I needed a big piece of aluminum for, and I had, it was one inch thick aluminum, and it was cutting kind of slow, and uh, I moved the uh, belt up to the faster speed on the pulley, and I was pushing her hard, and uh, before I realized it, I'd got this motor really hot, and uh, I, I kind of smelled it, and I turned off, flipped the switch off real quick, and when I turned the switch off, smoke was coming out of uh, one of the ends. I let it cool completely down. The next day, when I flipped the switch back on, it just belched fire and sparks everywhere. It, uh, I burned it up. This time, there's no coming back. It's burned, I don't know if you can see it in there, but the whole internal piece there, that winding is all burnt up. All the lacings melted, the wires are melted. She's toast, she's done. History. So, there we're, here we're at part two, and this upgrade is gonna be a big one. This is a three quarter horse motor just is rated you know supposedly the Chinese one was rated at three quarters of a horse but uh, but anybody who knows these motors are seriously overrated they're not near what they claim to be this will be a true three-quarter horsepower motor and it's three phase and I've got a surplus variable speed drive I'm going to be using so no more of the pulley arrangement for speeds I'll have variable speed on this thing you know, I, I get a little paranoid. I buy this stuff like on eBay or from some surplus outfit. You, it's all used. You never really know if it's going to work, but I uh, just hooked it up temporarily on the bench just to see, and it seems to be working fine. I uh, programmed the drive for the, the motor specs, and it's got kind of a slow ramp up time right now, but I can tweak that. But, Got lucky, everything works.
Keep putting the uh, new motor on was pretty much a it's kind of a bolt out change. It wasn't really that much different. One thing I did notice was the uh, Chinese motor has a, a flat. The new motor has a key. So I'll, I just had to put it in there without the key and I'll use the set screw just to land in the key shaft. The, you know, the slot for it in the shaft. Um, now the hard part, I'm trying to figure out, I want this to all be contained into one tool, so where do I put the drive? And what I'm thinking is, there's a big flat spot right here. It's on that sheet metal door. The door does open when you change the blade, but uh, I think this drive would sit right there just fine. As long as I have my cables routed where they're out of the way, where they, they can hinge with the door. I think that's going to be about the best place if I want to keep this all self-contained and portable. I could put it, hang the drive on a wall or something, but uh, I'd like the ability to be able to move this if I had to. I don't know. I'm curious if that drive will be affected by the vibration of the saw over time. I guess we'll just have to wait and see. You know, just a little update where I'm at. I've been kind of working on this in spare time. It's been a while, but I've got the... Uh, the drive mounted on this the door I've just got some pan head machine screws holding everything on and there's plenty of clearance in there they don't even get close to touching anything and for my wire I've just got a piece of an old extension cord it's three conductor even though the drive is three phase output it's single phase input so I use the the ground here to ground the chassis of the drive on the load side I went ahead and just used what's normally the ground wires one of the conductors I didn't run a separate ground and I've routed my uh, extension cord around you made some little uh, brackets again they're just held through on the same machine screws I've got it where it'll flex around there when you open the door Drilled one hole for a bracket there, another hole there, and as they come around down through the saw, they're gonna I'm gonna put me a box right here to terminate everything in. This cord I've also added a uh, light that'll come on, point right you know right to your saw blade. That's one of the things that. I don't know, maybe it's just because I'm getting older, but I always have a hard time seeing, so put some light on it now. And for a conduit box, I just took the, uh, the box off the original Chinese motor because I'd, I'd already put the switch in there the first time I overhauled this. I think I'm just going to mount it down here on the base plate. When you turn the switch on, turn the drive and the light on. It's already got a conduit hole in it you know a lot of people don't like uh, working around electrical stuff a lot of people are scared of electricity and, and you know there's a reason it's dangerous but just to kind of go over how you would do this I've got uh, the power coming in on a cord I've got the uh, power that goes out up to feed the drive on the one cord and the lamps on another cord Simply all you do is take all your neutral conductors right here The way you know the neutral conductor on a lamp cord is there will be ridges on the side of it. It's marked. It's different than the uh, If you ever look at it close, they're different than each other Take all three of your neutrals the power the lamp and the drive Why not those together? land your uh, Grounds from the power coming in and back in here if you see it Right there I've got the other one that's the uh, ground that goes up to the drive and of course they're grounded to the base so everything the motor drive saw everything's all grounded together don't leave the grounds off that that is where you can get hurt the only other thing left is the uh, power supply coming in from your cord and that just simply is interrupted with a toggle switch you know make and break the hot and everything comes on and off 
on the uh, the motor, the three conductors. If you run, you can run four. I didn't. They just simply come straight from the drive into the conduit box. All these uh, three phase motors have a wiring connection diagram on the side. Most of the time, these little single phase drives, you're going to use the low voltage connection. You need to get a two, you know, 240, 220, 240, depending on how it's labeled. Motor. They'll they'll say uh, like this one says 230 slash 460. Some some places some of them will say 240 slash 480, but that's the kind of motor you're after. All right, we're pretty much done here. We've got the uh, little box mounted from the old motor. Makes it just a nice little place to have your on and off switch when. Um, Sorry for the camera work here. We switch it on. Now I have a light that comes on, which I really like. The, uh, the drive comes up. Now here's where the first time you use one of these, if you're not used to three phase stuff, you got kind of a 50 50 shot on whether forward and reverse ends up being where you think it is. If you have to have your motor go a certain way when you press the forward button and the first time you turn it on it, it goes the other way it's, it's simple you either rotate two of the wires on this end of the motor lead or two of the wires on that end you just pick whichever ends easiest to get to for you but you know not both just one end you roll two of those wires and it'll change the direction of the motor this one just so happens whenever uh, the way it ended up, if I push reverse, the saw's going, uh, you know, the blade's going in the right direction. You, uh, it'll be up to you to, just, to figure out as you use your drive, do you want, you know, this is going to be RPMs of the motor. You may uh, get you a, uh, surface speed type gauge and decide how fast that blade's going make you a little chart maybe something like that or like me i just kind of go by feel well you know I, I know tell how it's cutting and you can adjust it on the fly but it starts up nice all these drives have ramps up and down this is starting off nice and slow and uh you have infinite speed adjustment now This thing will go down to a crawl. You can count the teeth on the blade, it goes so slow. Or you can ramp it on up there to you know whatever speed you want. Pretty easy stuff. And it should be way more uh, robust and durable than the Chinese motor that was on there.